oh, my sectionals are strong, but my marks are weak. This is quite a prevalent problem. And especially when CAT is around the corner, this becomes even more daunting. So how to deal with this issue when your mocks are not performing well, but your sectional scores are fine? Let's take a look at the reasons behind that and the mitigation measures. Take a look at this video till the end and understand what is your specific problem and deal with that. Let's start with the very first thing. Time management and stamina, most important. In fact, there are two things which are quite important. This one and the last reason, which I'll come to in another two, three minutes. Because we are taking shorter tests, it demands less endurance. Think about it. Sit on a chair for 40 minutes and sit on chair, say, for two hours. You would be able to realize, you know, what is the meaning of endurance. Couple of years ago, the time when I took my CAT exam, CAT was three hours long. Your CAT is going to be two hours long. So for a three hour duration, one had to really cultivate that kind of strength so that you do not feel the need to urinate in the exam. You also should be able to sit with more or less similar kind of, you know, focus. If something goes bad in one section, this, that, the effect of that section should not translate into, you know, the result of another section. All these things are required when we talk about building stamina and endurance. Because you are going to sit for two hours in one go, it is important that you sit for maybe two and a half hours. This will give you enough practice to deal with this issue. But if you keep on taking sectionals, now, you will never be able to achieve that. And that's why we feel that sectionals are better for me. Because come on, the kind of, you know, focus, the kind of stamina you need throughout the exam, you are only using that for 40 minutes, which is quite less a time. And in that case, it can give you a false sense of impression of time. Ki, ha, ha, you know, the overall exam is also going to be of the similar time zone. That means I will be able to maintain the same kind of strength throughout the time. But that is not going to happen if we do not you know, stop taking just 40 minute sectionals. Achha, how to deal with that? Practice full length test, very important. Instead of taking just sectionals, you should practice full length tests. But then why have we given you sectionals? <laughs> there is a reason behind it. Reason is that sectionals are there for you to build strength on that section. And that's all. The moment you think that you have built some level of strength, which we are going to talk about in the next slide, you should stop taking that. Huh. But initially also, it will be a good idea to not just hog on to 40 minute sectionals and then do nothing before and after it. If you want to take sectionals only, it is better to take three section, sectional tests, one after the other, if you don't want to take a full mock. You can decide what these three sectional tests are going to be. It could be that you take the sectionals of the three different sections, one QA, one DILR, one verbal, or you can take it for three sections in one go. So that will help you with the time tracking. Now the meaning of time tracking it, and especially this works well if you take the sectionals of the same subject. If you are taking three verbal sectionals, one after the other, and more or less it is expected that they could be of similar difficulty level. So you will be able to see that in the first 40 minutes, you are able to attempt these many questions, but maybe in the next or last 40 minutes, you are not able to attempt similar number of questions or the accuracy wavered. That means in the same amount of time with same difficulty level, we were not able to attempt same number of questions. That is where the time tracking idea gives you a picture that it is when the difficulty level of the section is not changing, then what is changing? So this will really help you during the mocks when you are able to keep track of your time. Second issue is mental fatigue. Another very important issue. Mental fatigue simply means lack of focus. Lack of focus means limited focus. If you are doing it only for 40 minutes, then you have of course better focus, but that's a short span. But then when you have to sit for a longer duration, two hours, then focus will waver. Now reason number one and reason number two, they are not mutually exclusive. For that matter, other reasons are not also mutually exclusive. Basically, you have to deal with all these things. I have just categorized some specifics as to why you might be getting a better score at sectionals and not at mocks. That is one reason. So what does it do? It creates a wrong impression of subject strength when you are only focusing for 40 minutes. Then in that high energy, high stamina state, you are able to get better marks. But when you are doing it in mocks, then you would, now your mind will trick you. Achha, I'm getting good at, uh, you know, VARC in general, but in my mocks, overall, if my percentile is coming low, even if it is 
slightly lower in uh, VRC as well, but I will still think that comparatively my VRC is better. This can give us a fake sense of subject strength. How to deal with that? Same thing, you know, of course, take full length mocks. And the other thing, of course, is that you simulate the exam environment at home during mocks. What do I mean by simulating the home environment? Two aspects to it. If you are not taking mocks, then take three sectionals one after the other. And if you are taking the mocks, better is that you just ensure that nobody disturbs you by coming to you directly. But everything else goes on the way it happens. So when I was preparing for my CAT exam, I told my mother that if she wants to come into the room, take some stuff from the Almira and all that stuff, she can do that and she must do that. In fact, if she wants to come for say, you know, two, three times, then maybe she should, uh, you know, come into the room uh, 10 times, you know, even if she wants to take maybe a paper or, or some utensil, I don't know, whatever the case be. But she should not talk to me. In fact, anybody was welcome, but they should not talk to me. Now, what happened? This really gave me enough practice that when I was taking my final exam, nothing bothered me. There are so many things that are happening in the exam hall and outside of it. People might be coughing, they might be sneezing, they might be doing <laughs> like that, right? Because it's a big hall. Then somebody's pencil will drop, somebody something will drop and whatnot. Some, some, you know, you might hear voices from outside that a JCB is digging up the soil. How will you deal with that? You cannot create a perfect silence for yourself. The perfect silence is always in your mind. As long as nobody is disturbing you, other things should not disturb. And that can only happen when you practice that level, when you practice that ability. So you got to become at ease with whatever is happening in the environment. And that happens when you simulate that environment. But that cannot happen with just a sectional because that is not again a mock simulation. So you have to sit for three mocks back to back. In fact, at that time, CAT used to be a three-hour exam. Now it is a two-hour exam. So when I cultivated my stamina, strength, uh, you know, this mental focus, I used to sit for three and a half hours. You have to try to sit for two and a half hours in one go. You should develop that kind of ability that you do not feel the need to drink water in between. You should develop that kind of ability that you do not need, you know, you do not feel the need to go to loo during your exam time. You won't get these things, uh, you know, during the exam. So better is you start cultivating it right away. Suddenly you will feel that mocks and sectionals both will balance. Third thing is difficulty level. What do I mean by difficulty level? See, sometimes what happens that sectionals can offer low difficulty level as compared to mocks. And the reason is very simple. Sectionals are given to you so that you can cultivate sectional strength. What do I mean by cultivating sectional strength? Do you need sectionals to get 95 percentile? Do you need sectionals to get 99 percentile, 90 percentile, 85 percentile, what? I have a simple metric. The moment you reach the cutoff, basically 85 percentile, you should stop taking sectionals. You should not return to that. Sectionals are there for you to just give you some regularity in your scores. That say, okay, I have achieved this level. Now I need to use those skills, whatever I used to, you know, do in terms of my RC selection and all that stuff in 40 minutes. Now I have to do the same thing during the full length box, right? And of course, you know, I'm not saying that sectionals will always be of easy difficulty level as compared to mocks. Generally it happens, but it might also look like because we are only doing it for 40 minutes. In that case, it is always a good idea to compare your mocks and your sectionals through the analysis. So you would be having the analytics tab in your my IMS portal or whatever, you know, portal you are using of the world. All of them will be having some sort of an analytics tab. So you can check that out. In our portal, we give a very specific thing called P value and, you know, the difficulty type A, B, C, which tells you that whether it is a difficult question or not. So overall, you can gauge how many difficult questions were there in your sectionals overall and how many difficult questions were there in your mock test. And that way, you can understand if it was actually a difficult mock or not. But this is an important thing. Difficulty level can be real. Difficulty level can be imagined also. But you will never be able to deal with that if you'll constantly keep on taking just the sectionals. And that's why, of course, you know, uh, you should stop taking sectional tests the moment you reach that level. And my level is very simple, 85 percentile. Acha percentile means what? Just take a look at the absolute score, which can get you 85 percentile more or less. In verbal, it is somewhere around uh, six to seven questions or eight questions maximum. 
correct correct i'm talking about right in dilr it will be somewhere around one set yeah just complete one set and in qa it would again be around four to five or maybe six questions depending upon the difficulty level that will take you to a great sectional cutoff now if you think that okay no for me sectional cutoff will be 90 percent i'll great you know add two three questions to that that's okay but once you achieve that stop taking it and finally my dear unless you deal with stress basically this is a wrong term stress management stress handling is a wrong term why it is a wrong term stress is like kuda it's garbage so what you don't really pick garbage from one place in your home and keep it somewhere else. That is called stress management. You don't manage garbage, you alleviate it, right? So ideally this term should be stress alleviation. But I have mentioned stress handling, why? Because some, some form of stress is needed, right? So that's the kind of stress handling you should be able to do. What do I mean by that? Full mocks create more test-like pressure. So definitely you should take them. That is exactly what I want. Simulation of the exact real environment. And it impacts decision making and speed. So if you want that it the full mocks should not look like a lot of pressure to you, they should not alter your decision making and speed in a negative sense, you should do something which only deals with stress management, stress handling or stress alleviation. And those things are practicing meditative and rhythmic breathing, meditative techniques, rhythmic breathing. If you are already uh, into some sort of meditative practices through some guru, keep on doing that. If you don't know, we have a couple of videos on that, various types of breathing on our IMS channel. You can check that out or you can just ping us. Maybe we'll try to help you. We'll try to connect you or you can just reach out to a, go a good yoga practitioner who can help you with that. But please don't <laughs> become your own yoga teachers from the, from the reels, okay? Yoga is a very intricate thing and you should not misuse or abuse it. And uh, it is it is a good idea to, you know, uh, do some breathing exercises before mocks. Long, deep breathing with your eyes closed for a couple of minutes before you start your mocks is going to really calm your mind down and it will help you increase your stamina and focus for a longer duration. Cool, na? Interesting. So, final thing is misunderstanding of something. What do I mean by misunderstanding? <laughs> we have already discussed that sectionals are not mocks. Okay. So sectionals are there only for sectional strength until bad performance is eliminated. Second thing is sectional percentile is not mock percentile. Same reason, if your sectional scores are not reflective of your real strength, absolute real strength, then of course the percentile is also not reflective of your absolute percentile. Why? Two reasons behind that. One, if you think that sectionals are not very difficult for you for whatever reasons we have discussed, then it is creating a fake sense of impression in your mind that this is my final percentile. Second thing is, sectionals are not taken by that many students as much as say mocks are taken and percentile is a relative marking of your strength. So if you get a 90 percentile in sectionals, but you know, uh, for the similar kind of effort, you get say 85 percentile in your mocks, that means, you know, there is more competition in mocks that way. I'm not saying that it is a bad idea to look at that percentile. I'm just saying that do not consider that as your final percentile. Okay. So you have to get rid of this mis misunderstanding. And how will you get rid of that misunderstanding? By not just taking sectionals. So I hope all of you are currently realizing the importance of taking sectionals and then also stop taking sectionals. And that's where you start building strength on your mocks. Just do all these things that we have discussed in the last couple of minutes and of course keep on you know doing your meditative exercises and so on and you will see that your sectionals and mocks will come to parity. All the very best for your upcoming exam and we'll catch up once again soon. And by the way, why don't you subscribe if you like the video.